Well, it is Thursday and I am in the office in Morristown, New Jersey, getting things ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be in Philadelphia and in Camden County, uh, New Jersey. So it's a little bit of a busy morning tomorrow, but we are getting things ready. So hopefully everything will go well. With that said, I do want to talk a little bit about bail and bail procedure, especially in light of some recent developments that I've been reading about. Uh, with regards to Richard Sherman and the um, NFL and the charges that he is facing there for domestic violence. And um, I believe possibly resisting arrest in Seattle, Washington. And while I'm not licensed in the state of Washington, this is a good opportunity to discuss a uh, bail procedure and why it's so important to have an attorney on board whenever you go before a judge with regards to bail. Now I do expect Mr. Sherman to be released uh, later today, I believe that he has a hearing in Seattle, Washington, and while um, Washington State is obviously different than Pennsylvania and New Jersey, the bail procedures are very similar. Uh, bail is based on usually contacts with the community and propensity toward violence and or safety of the community. Now, in Mr. Sherman's case, it's my understanding that uh, he does live in that area. I believe that he is a, a resident of the state. Um, the incident actually began, it looks like, at his in-law's residence. There's an allegation regarding an alleged burglary. He was attempting to gain access. They must have called police. I believe, according to what I've read, he, he fled the scene, uh, was later arrested, and during the course of leaving and being arrested, there was also an allegation regarding some type of hit and run involving a vehicle, not necessarily an individual, at a construction site. Uh, police did find him eventually, and I believe there is where the, the possible resisting arrest charge. It looks like a possibly an aggravated assault charge, if I'm understanding correctly, that one of the officers was injured during the alleged struggle with Mr. Sherman regarding uh, himself and a uh, possible canine was also involved, uh, which appears to have uh, taken down Mr. Sherman. Uh, he had to be treated for uh, lacerations to his ankle. So he was taken into custody because it was a domestic violence incident. Uh, the procedure there in Washington state is that you're not granted bail until you see, until you have a hearing and that hearing uh, is taking place today. Uh, they'll establish probable cause for the charges and then the, the judge will set bail. Uh, the state of Washington has a cash bail system and or a bond system where there's a monetary amount Obviously, Mr. Mr. Sherman being a professional athlete, I don't believe that he's going to be any, any trouble posting bail. Bail will be reasonable, I imagine. I don't believe he has any other prior criminal history outside of this incident. Um, with regards to safety of the community, I'm sure the prosecution may make some type of argument regarding uh, the state he was found in, regarding it appears that he may have been intoxicated. Uh, he may have struggled with police, it appears. Uh, there's an allegation towards some type of domestic violence. So, but uh, it appears to be rather an isolated incident and nothing outside of, of this incident. So perhaps the court will, will take that into account the prosecution's arguments, but I don't believe the, the, the defense uh, will be unable to overcome the prosecution's arguments. With regards to contacts community, obviously he's employed, well, he's a free agent now, but he, he has a status as a professional athlete. He has strong contacts in the community, I'm sure. Um, I believe that he will uh, be somewhere employed uh, later on this season. So uh, employment issue, I'm sure that um, that will be hard to establish. Um, I believe that he is married. Uh, he does have children, according to what I've read. So all good things with regards to uh, establishing contacts, uh, flight risk, Again, unless there's an incident involving some type of failure to appear at prior court hearings, which I doubt he has, any type of uh, bench warrants, which I doubt he has, the prosecution won't be able to make any type of really strong argument to hold Mr. Mr. Sherman uh, or have the judge set an unreasonably high bail. Even if bail is set at a higher level, uh, again, I don't believe that bail is going to be an issue here in this case. So it's important, though, to understand that Whenever you're arrested, it's important to get an attorney on board very quickly, uh, regardless of how minor you, you believe the charges will be. Now, in Mr. Sherman's case, uh, it appears that there is at least one felony charge uh, for the alleged burglary. I don't know if domestic violence, how it's graded there in Washington State. Um, 
it can be obviously a felony charge depending on the extent of the injuries uh, in Pennsylvania or New Jersey. The resisting arrest charge, typically that's a misdemeanor, but if the officer was injured, that's, that's going to be a felony charge as well. But keep in mind that bail is based on those factors. You have to get an attorney on board because you don't want a situation where the prosecution is still be making an argument and you're possibly arguing for yourself or the person arguing for you, be it your public defender or your court appointed attorney, is not familiar with your background and does not make the proper arguments at the court. And again, the court is looking for certain factors that it needs to check off in order to set a bail at a reasonable amount and not impose some unreasonable conditions. So if you have questions about bail, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey, the website gambonelaw.com, a tremendous resource for your family, all of my books, my blogs, my videos, everything that I've ever written as a lawyer is available there. Tomorrow is Friday, the weekend is here. I'll be coming out with my weekly e-update, which goes out to over 3,000 of our current and former clients in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. It's a great new resource to have going into your weekend. And on the weekend, we do realize that most of our bill, most of our calls do come in. That's why we answer our calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Once again, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey. Have a great Thursday afternoon, and I will talk to you all very soon.